Next on the agenda is Strategic Technology Reserve Mobile Communications Unit um, is a video SOP. Hi, I'm Mark Botkin. I work with the Arizona Division of Parks to Management in the Communications Section. And I'm going to present a overview of our uh, working group to develop, redevelop the standard operating procedures for our mobile communications vehicles, which are called the Bullfrog and then four toads in each of the counties. The Arizona Division of Emergency Management is responsible for uh, SKIP Initiative Number 8 in uh, sustaining the Strategic Technology Reserve, which includes five communications trailers, with uh, radio caches, satellite phones, voice over ID phones, laptops, and then the five mobile communication vehicles uh, that are strategically located throughout Arizona. This one's here in Maricopa County at state level, and then we have four codes in uh, one in Gila County, one in Mojave County, Navajo, and Pima County, and they are regionalized. It is not specific to that county. It's and each emergency management function within those counties see them as regional, northwest, north, south, and then central, east central. So uh, basically, to quickly, Gila County is the three Gs. Gila Graham and Greenlee, Mojave takes responsibility for Mojave, Coconino, and La Paz at times. Navajo County, uh, Navajo Apache, and Coconino, and Pima County has got all the southern counties and La Paz also. Uh, they are developed for any agency in the state. They're available for deployment. We um, recognize that through an MOU with each board of supervisors within each county. That is basically their responsibility to maintain the vehicle and then deploy it when, when asked uh, and is feasible for them. Justin got a technical assistance grant uh, through the Office of Emergency uh, Office of Emergency Communications um, in December, and we started the process in January to rewrite the SOPs for both uh, platforms. So in January, we all met, uh, planned on what we were going to do, and then we all worked through the summer getting it done. Uh, it was a lot of work, but it was very useful. Um, I'm just going to go in real quick with the equipment overview of what each one of these uh, vehicles have. So, of course, we have the 10 Ford, 10 Ford, never heard trouble saying that, 10 Ford AGU 1000 with three Kenwood PHF, three Kenwood UHF, three or two 800s. Um, and then on the amateur radio side, the ICOM dual bands, tri band, um, the XLT5000 is, of course, our state EOC free, and then a unit and scanner for our uh, amateur radio people. We have satellite communications through a tri star, I direct, high speed internet, high speed, four, four meg up, six meg down. Um, we have a Dell rack down computer, three Dell laptops, the long range Wi Fi, and a uh, VPN control of, of the IP systems. The, this is within what we accomplished with the SOP was to identify the roles and responsibilities and re identify uh, for the logistics duty officer, the drivers, the technical support specialist, and so forth. And we really went heavily into um, on the technical specialist using the COMEL com key language to tie that together. Uh, even the you know calling for the mobilization process and so forth, um, all of us have been through these COMEL and COMT classes, and I think we tried to follow that same language and same concepts uh, so that it all ties together. I just want to make one comment here. 
The outline counties, the other 14 counties in Arizona, almost all of their communication support is provided by volunteers. Very few counties have the time and money to provide a full-time person in that county, Commel world, incident management, and so forth. So a huge amount of volunteers um, is what we rely on. So tying in the Commel County makes it all fit for that. And we saw several of them in there and maybe one here uh, at the earlier seminar. Uh, we really would like to, and then the incident command again, you're working for the incident commander and make sure that they understand that. Once they deploy, incident commander is their boss, not their emergency manager back home. So uh, again, we just went through and, and redefined activation procedures, deployment, uh, training, what training needs to be provided to each driver and, and so forth, and then the prioritization, again, we cannot take complete control away from emergency managers in each county, however, we gave them an idea of how they should prioritize uh, when, when they allow it to be deployed. Recently, we asked Mojave County, maybe if we could deploy his toad, he, however, reserved the right to keep it during the Dean fire. So it was a difference between Yarnell and Dean. Again, if we weren't going to be using it for a huge communication issue. It was more of a comfort issue. And so his thing was I might need it for the Dean fire. You can buy it with someone else, which we did. Uh, we, we went through the pre-deployment checklist and got huge input and technical advice from Dane at S I E S A I T. S A I T. Uh, they were great on the technical side. I just to explain to him what was in there. He'd never seen it. He knew exactly what I was talking about. Again, operational procedures for the, the T S H P's or the technical uh, people. That way we know again what Com L and Com P lines that everybody has the same information. Everybody has the same training, and. Um, we can provide this to whoever incident commander asks for it. Um, again, they're all pretty much the same. You can run the shore power generator power, so forth and so on. You have an IP camera on that mass, which is pretty cool. And then we have uh, the big full broadcast beer. Vehicle stabilizer system. Toads only have pads that come down and support the back, which was a big thing trying to explain to some people. We went through step by step, and this is an example of the SOP where we were able to highlight what we were talking about and then uh, put step by step what a person should do on turning the power selection bar and so forth. That's just an example of what the SOP looks like. These are the diagram or one diagram that was included in the SOP which, uh, again, they uh, modified to our needs. Again, the technical guidance and references back to, to make everything fit together, that the people operating and how we're going to operate this mobile communications vehicle is in compliance, and at least guidelines of errors are NIPOG, our kick piece within the county. That these people are, are aware that there's the chasm tool out there and that there are references to go to so that when they hopefully, when they show up, we would like to basically have technical specialists as well as com keys, com L's in that vehicle. If we have to get them other places, that's fine too. But everybody's going to be on the same page when it comes to um, responding to the incident and what they can provide to the incident commander. We want to prevent a maintenance checklist, which is very important. Um, after we finish with it, or just about finished, they offered a beta test of a video that we could video some of these procedures and uh, put them in on the electronic version anyway of the SOP. So we um, agreed, Karen agreed for me. Uh, so they provide
provided the technical resource and videographer for the production. We got the uh, Hill County code and went up to Payson at the park up there, which was very nice. Um, and uh, Deborah Williams kind of paved the way for us there, Hewlett County Emergency Manager Assistant. Uh, then, so then using the code as a guide, we created short videos outlining step-by-step -step, uh, how to set up and store the different uh, pieces of equipment and procedures to go through. To uh, so we went up there and did that. So we had three versions. Uh, high definition, DSD, and then um, basically they're online. These are the videos we created. What are they? A minute and a half to two and a half minutes at the most. So the overview, how to access the Wi-Fi, the HE 1000 login, the mass camera login, how to deploy the stove antenna, um, basically the, the radio antennas as well as the IP camera mask, the satellite dish, and how to turn it on, generated power, stabilize, and then shore power. So the difference between generator and shore, which in the code is a little strange. So we just want to make sure that they understood the differences there. Uh, so the stabilizers on both sides. I think we have a video to um, illustrate. I think it helps. Power applied to the unit and the correct circuit breaker turned on at the circuit breaker panel. We have power to the comm rack. To turn the satellite controller and modem on, first turn on the trip light power protection module, then the UPS on, and finally the track star system power button. So you get an indication that we have power and the satellite dish is ready to be deployed. When you have a ready light indication on the controller, press the start button and your antenna will start to deploy. The antenna will search for satellites, reference satellites, as indicated here, and you'll know you're locked on when you have three green lights on your modem. This could take a while, up to 15 minutes, as long as your controller indicates it is active and doing its functions, don't be alarmed. You will know you're locked on to the correct satellite when you see in your track star screen, lock 123, GPS sent, and transmit enabled. You'll also notice your transmit, receive, and network light are green on your iDirect 3000 series modem. To show the satellite antenna, Press the run button until the stop LED turns on, and then press the negative button until the screen indicates stowing. the generators on, press and hold the prime button until the light lights, and then press and hold the start until, until the generator starts. Go to the second generator, press and hold the prime until you get the orange indicator light, 
press and hold start until that generator starts. Then you can apply power by turning the shore generator switch to generator, which is to the right on both generators. You now have power to the mobile communications unit. Now that we have both generators on, we need to make sure that our power plugs are matched to the generators. At this point, we have power only from one generator one. To get power from generator two, we remove the plug and then plug it in two. Power two, flip circuit breakers, you now have power to the communications equipment in the van. When deploying the stabilizers at the rear of the vehicle, check the firm surface with no obstructions. The control for the stabilizers are the two toggle switches to the left of the mass hydraulic system. Firmly press both toggle switches down. Check that the stabilizers are actually coming down and then continue to deploy them until they hit the ground and stabilize the vehicle as evidenced by the vehicle rising up and it actually sounds different. Now that we've stabilized the vehicle, we can lower the stair step, shut the door, lower the step, and the door can be reopened to continue cutting up the vehicle. Any other questions? 